Hey everyone, Romain here. Uh, today I want to talk about F1 steering wheel. Uh, but before we go uh, into that, don't forget to subscribe, to like, to leave me a comment so I can read them and come back to you. Uh, we can have some fun. So, Formula One steering wheel. So that's my Haas 2020 steering wheel. But if I go close to you, right here, KR, Kimi Raikkonen. What you have to know is that every Haas Formula One steering wheel was made on the, ba the base of Kimi Raikkonen Ferrari wheel. If you start behind here uh, on the right hand side for myself, that's up shifting and then down shifting. And that's the clutch. So in Formula 1, you have only two pedals, throttle on brake. The clutch for the race start or the pit stop, it's here on the hand. Then you've got two uh, buttons, small buttons here. Uh, you can just see it. On the right hand side, that would be full power. So you would discharge the battery on a straight line, but that would give you full power. And on the left side, it would be the DRS. The DRS also works with those lights. If you are within a second of the car in front of you, two lights will come on, you get to the line, four lights, four green lights will come on, you press the button, it's open. In qualifying, you know it would open at a line, but you still have the light coming, showing that you've crossed the line and you can press the button. The DRS closes either if you release the, the throttle, if you touch the brake, or if you press the button again, right? So that's three way of closing the DRS. And then there's two more buttons behind those quick, quick buttons. So imagine you're into a fast section, turning right, left, right, left, you can, you, and then there's a braking coming, which is a bit tricky. You just bring that down and then back up. So those buttons, you can set up the way you want it. Everything that's at the front can be put on those buttons. So brake balance, differential, engine braking, it, it, you can combine them. So it's like a very easy way of doing it. So that's two buttons. And we actually got a lot more here on the function button, four. So that's another four kind of the same thing, but a little bit more harder to access. So you would use it for like a big straight line with a big braking at the end and then another straight line. So you have the time to rotate and go to function one, two, three or four, right? If we go at the front of the steering wheel, pit limiter, uh, oh, here, uh, neutral, radium, that OK button works with those, that also works with those. So if you have a, a wheel speed failure, sensor failure, right? The gearbox won't know which speed you're doing. So you'd probably go MFA, position 22, so one, two on the 10, one, two on the one, okay. And then you would cancel the, the sensor, override it, and then keep going. So whenever a sensor or whatever fail on the car, that's the way you can go. So MF1, MFB, MFT, and all of them are like 100 things. I've got no idea what they were behind, but there's 100 things behind. Then the differential here. So that's uh, differential. That's to help the car balance. So if the front tires are going, you open the differential, meaning the rear wheels have got more way of turning to a different speed and the car would turn more. And on the opposite, if the car gets really uh, on the nose, very loose on entry or in the mid you close the differential to stabilize it so in high speed corner normally you keep the differential closed and in a very very small airpin like monaco you open the diff as much as you can to get the car rotating then if we keep going uh, we've got a sock state of charge so that's the, how much battery you want to recharge the lap Typically in qualifying, you would put stock one and that's one lap of battery. If you wanted to do two laps, you could stock two and then the rate would be six or seven and that's sustainable. That means every lap you burn and charge the same amount of battery. Then we had uh, brake temperature here, brake shaping here. Uh, brake shaping is how much energy recover on the braking. So when you release the brake pedal, the brake balance will migrate to the rear of the car and you will recover more energy, but also you use it to balance your car, right? So if you had front locking, in the corner you would go shape five if you are real looking later the corner you go shape one for example quite complicated but i'm trying to make it as easy as it can then mfb uh behind settings that middle one here that's a big one that's all the settings that you have into the race right so push is push uh, attack defense is like a different type of deployment so you deploy more in a straight line so to protect or to attack the guy in front of you and then a couple of fuel saving switches engine safe that is bad if that uh, that would happen that means you've got something wrong there's a puncture button so you don't damage the dif differential manual safety car slow was to charge it's like a charge button k2 was more like an outlap thing in qualifying and then an rs uh, race start spark ignition that got banned so it used to be the, the engine setting you would use in a race more power less power more you know you would damage more the car the, the engine so you would have a certain amount of lap on each settings but when if i banned the settings uh, in the race that became useless tires orange or slicks greens are intermediates blues are wet 
they, do, they all have a, a different diameter. So those settings are to switch on the rain light at the back, but also to set up the pit limiter because different tire diameter, different speed in the pit lane. So you had to make sure that it was on the right settings before you would change your tires. And then finally here, in practice, the screws control. So whenever the car goes at 200 or 220 or 250 kph constant on a straight line, but also a tire degradation. So in the race, we wouldn't communicate on the radio where the tires are going, but we just go through the wheel. So the engineers would know, but everyone else wouldn't know. Um, so that was a way to, to, um, to hide it. Charge button here in qualifying, you would charge the battery, do a fast lap, and then charge the battery on the next lap, go again. In button, that's a pit confirm to understand, to, to let the team understand that you have understood the message that you need to pit now. Pump, that was an engine setting, getting a ping pump working and drink. Uh, drink, that's for the driver. You know, there's a, there's a small pump, pump in the car with a tube coming through your mouse. And then when you were thirsty, you would push that button and you would get some uh, some fluid coming in. Basically, all those, all those buttons can be changed, can be modified, colors, shape. When you get to a new team, you learn about those buttons and you learn where they are and you can make, you know, changes. So that's why every sting wheel is a little bit different between teammates because some may like uh, buttons at a certain position and some may like buttons on another position. But basically, that's the wheel I was using in 2020. It was very similar to Kevin Magnussen. I think I showed you as much as I could. Probably gonna be uh, gonna be told off uh, for doing that, but I really wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, I think it's great. Make sure that you leave me a comment if there's anything more you wanna know. I'm not sure I can tell anything more, but happy to, to try to. Hope you enjoyed it and can't wait to see you on the next video.